Welcome back, everybody. DJ Yokely with you on this YSN Power Hour presented by our friends at Toyota of Warren. It has been a catcher's week here on the Power Hour. You know my love and affinity for the backstops, the uh, tools of ignorance, so to speak. And this one, no different. One of the best by far. And I think when you put elite catchers into a group, this young man has been elite for a long time. And he's been kind of in the darkness, in the shadows, as the catchers usually are. At this time, I bring in my good friend and uh, a kid and a young man I look up to so much in Michael Patelis of the Canfield Cardinals. Mikey, it is always good to see you, my friend. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on today, DJ. Always, man. So, I mean, you have grown up before our very eyes. I feel like you you have just constantly shined. And, and every single opportunity to to do so, you've done it over the years. And you've led some great pitchers to some great success. But now you're finally able to have that kind of success of your own. You've been doing it behind the dish, obviously, and everybody knows you for that. But you've been able to get on the bump a little bit and show off some uh, some good, uh, I don't know, speed, velocity, uh, command, all that stuff. Has it been a challenge for you to, to trade in the catcher's mask and, and go on the other side of things from the battery and, and, and pitch? Yeah, it has been a little bit, but that's something that I've always had in my back pocket is pitching because I always threw hard and I've always wanted to do everything at a young age. So everything I try to do, pitch, catch, even play the outfield a little bit when I was younger, I've just been taught to do everything. And trading in the catcher's max for the first time was a little difficult, but I wanted to try something a little different at the high school level and shove a little bit. Why did uh, what first got you into catching? Was it by necessity? Was it because you thought it was cool, you know, to wear the gear, all that stuff? What got you into being a, a catcher at, at this level? It was actually one of my travel coaches when I was around 13, 14 that really got me into it. Is actually the West Branch uh, head coach, Rick Mullenix. He was my travel coach for three or four years. And he taught me everything I knew from 13 to probably 15, 16. And playing under him, he taught me a lot. And I just really fell in love with it at that point. I mean, that's a pretty big name in uh, in the baseball world. So uh, you've played and been coached by some pretty big names along the way. Obviously, Gary Niddle. Uh, but you look, I, I got a text from Nate Shaw today. Uh, how excited he was for you to, to sit down on YSN and finally get some of the comeuppance that you deserve. Um, talk about, I mean, the Canfield has been a loaded program, and you don't stop there. You go in the summers, you play travel ball with a lot of kids from a lot of different programs. How is being just part of that, not being necessarily the lead dog or the lead bird in some cases, but how is being part of that and being around that talent made you better on the field and off the field? It just showed me how hard those guys work because they've gotten theirs. They're committed. They're playing college baseball. And that's exactly where I want to go is following their footsteps. And one thing that they did teach me was leadership. And Nate did a great job with that for the past two years. Him, Landon, Petro, all of them, that they really showed how to be a true leader in a program, both on and off the field. And that's exactly what I want to do is – for the next two years is continue that and just teach the younger kids how to be good people, good leaders and great baseball players. What did those guys, I mean, obviously you alluded to some of the things, but I mean, you guys were, were so, how do I put this? You were on a, on, on a shelf last year by yourself. Everybody was looking at Canfield and saying, if they don't do it, nobody will. Um, and then, Obviously, the the Niles games ha game happens and kind of took the world by storm a little bit. Niles obviously very excited about it, but there were a lot of people that you know I'm sure it were saying I told you so. They they were who we said we were, or you know they weren't who we said we you know they were, and things of that nature. How does a situation like that? I guess I'm asking. How does that help your character along the way when your expectations are championship or bust? And it's a, what, a second round exit. How does that build your character up for, for not only your junior year, but heading into your senior year? Yeah, that wasn't the greatest feeling. And everybody who plays baseball knows that being an underdog is always better. Knowing that if you go out and beat a team that you're not supposed to, 
then that's that's one of the best feelings and being on the flip side of that that really did hurt and it taught all of us who came back and plus the seniors as well they know that failure and struggle is a part of this game and being able to come off that stronger and better people that just brought us closer together as a group last year to f to have that one final moment together knowing that we put everything we did on the table and have a great year just to have it end like that that happens sometimes and that really promoted us this year to do even better and get past that slump and not happen to have that final conversation at the end of the year and say hey i guess it was an okay year but you know we tried our best but we're looking to go a little bit farther than we did last year and even though we don't have the recognition or the attention right now that we did last year we're still looking to put our name out there and be like hey we're still canfield we know how to play baseball and we're here to come we're come beat you and put everything else on the table I feel like that's an attitude. You have to have that attitude when you're in Canfield. When do you kind of get that embedded into your DNA? Is that a young age when you're playing little league, or, or you know, when you cross the threshold into high school? You know, is that the is that the mentality that you have to have when you're a Canfield Cardinal? Because it really is Canfield versus the world in most cases. Yeah, at a very young age, like even literally playing the Boardman, Poland, Austin town, it was always a, we want to beat them so bad. And that didn't really happen for us when we were 12 going 0 and 2 in the district and having those same cities and those same kids come into high school and play against one another. That's still a driving edge for us, especially to beat them even more because we didn't have it when we were little as much. And now it's on a bigger stage. We want to put ourselves out there and and give it to them. You know, it's funny you said you talk about big stages. Is there a stage big enough for you, or or, or I guess too big for you in some cases? Are, are you someone that that is able to kind of look around and, and and understand where you're at in that moment, or is it just as long as the base paths are ninety feet away, you're in your comfort zone? Yeah, I've never been too afraid of any bigger stage. Like I've played in college parks before and even big high school fields. Like it's still 90 feet, 60 and six inches for the mound to the plate. And it's just a bat in your hand, a ball coming at you from a pitcher. And all you got to do is play and relax and have fun. And I've been lucky to have all the luck I have with everything else around me and all the people around me to help me through everything and it just comes natural to have fun and play the game let's talk about some of these coaches that you've had over your tenure man uh the canfield dugout is loaded with talent obviously uh on the roster but the coaching staff is incredible as well and it feel like uh it's a it's a one-to-one -one teaching experience sometimes with as many coaches as you have in there talk about those that leadership that's in that dugout. And it's seeming like everywhere you look, you have a, a wealth of knowledge, uh, information, experience, all that stuff that goes into it, that you can make some great calls. Uh, and as a catcher, I know, uh, because I was there with you, that's that's got to be nice for you to be able to lean on sometimes when, when times are tough and, and you're seeing it all happen. And sometimes, let's be honest, you feel helpless because you're just the guy behind the dish, right? Yeah. Uh, Coach Weimer's really helped me through pitch progressions and teaching me what to call and what count and against what hitter and what team and whatnot. So having him helping me with catching and also teaching me about how to be a pitcher as well, that's been something that I've been so fortunate to have, like with all the coaches here, especially he's been the guy that I've gone to when I have certain que questions about anything and ever since he came in last year, I've really absorbed everything I could from him, knowing that I've only had two years with him. And with everybody else, I was um, hoping to lucky be lucky and have four with everyone else. Coach Chad is another one that's helped me out on the hitting side that last year I didn't do great and didn't have the size to go extra bases and everything. And him and I have really put in the work this offseason into fixing little things in my swing that he noticed last year and just putting it all together this year to 
try to help this team even more and progress and get to where we want to be. Coach Which- Nittle done a little bit of everything and he's been there on the pitching side hitting and even helped me catch a little bit the other day I thought it was really cool when he got back there and put on a glove to to catch a little bullpen and I was like there's no way this is happening right now wow Nitz was catching bullpens it was it was maybe five or six pitches but I was still having having a great time with it and laughing along with him Oh, all right. So, so let's, let's let everybody behind the curtain a little bit as, as a catcher, right? Because those winter months that you're in the gym or you're in the the facility and it's inside every day and all you are good for, the only thing you are good for is catching bullpens. Can you put into words how miserable bullpens are this time of year when you're catching them on a rain day or whatever it is, people don't understand they think, oh, well, that's your job is to catch. Listen, your your job is to catch, but there's so much more that you have to do. You got to control base runners, control pitchers, understand the coaches, understand situations. To just sit there and just be a catcher and basically a garbage can, right? That's what that's what I felt like. How do you feel about catching bullpens? Yeah, sometimes that is how it feels, especially when I don't get the swings I want every day <laughs> practice because we're in here usually hitting every single day when we don't have games and catching bullpens. It's, it's usually not too much or too bad at all. It's just learning how each pitcher throws each pitch and see how much trust you can build up with them, especially me being an everyday guy. And Dylan Mancini stepped up when I've pitched, and he's done a great job up to this point as well. Him and I have both put the work in behind the plate this year and it's awesome to see him doing well and just every day catching some pens just working on little things each and every day to overall get better is something that I really focus on especially when there's no other distractions around like runners and weather and everything like that just being in here and focusing on one guy one pitch at a time that's something that I'm fortunate to have is this facility here today. I, I'm always just enamored by how you take a, a negative and, and always turn it into a positive. I'm trying to throw you off your game, but you're not having it. That's just the kind of guy you are, Mikey. Is you're always thinking positive. You're always thinking the next level. Uh, eternal optimist here, but I'm trying to shake you, and you're not doing it. And I, I again, I have so much respect for you for that. Um, you talked about last year some of the struggles you had at the plate. You find yourself a lot of times in the middle of this heart, in the heart of this lineup. Um, on on a daily basis as a catcher who, as you alluded to, you're not always getting the swings that you need necessarily to maybe get out of a slump or, you know, help create that, that work-life balance, so to speak in a lineup. How do you go about making sure that you get what you need, uh, outside of practice time and things of that nature to make sure that you're still at the top of your game? Yeah, that came in this, uh, winter with lifting every day. I got a, AJ Slank and I all went to a trainer, Darius Binion over at Fine Tune Fitness, and he really helped me get my body right for this for this upcoming season and the long summer ahead. That he really helped me get my body where it should be, being a catcher, squatting every day, having strong legs, and having the outcome to do it every single day and not get fatigued and get tired. And in the cage, I just try to take quantity or quality over quantity swings, not try to do too much and try to focus on ball on barrel and just let the results happen. So what's interesting to me is, is I always thought it was interesting when I had a coach varsity level, right? You'd never get the swings. Every, you'd always get skipped in the cage, but when it came time for cardio or uh, for those, those sprints or whatever you had to do, they always seemingly knew that uh, the catchers had to be included in that from your standpoint. I know you just talked about getting things back together in the weight room. Do you ever get skipped? Do you ever, does just, does Nitz ever say, Hey, you know, you're going to have an off day with, with your cardio because you've been working hard behind the dish and 600, 700 squats later after uh, in those bullpens, does he ever give you a pass? Um, not really. I'm usually like the guy who wants to do everything. And oh, wow. Uh, this off season, we actually had a bunch of conditioning days that we made into competitions and everything. And 
even that was just extremely fun. That brought us closer together and brought everybody to be one team. And that's one thing that we've really tried to be a part of is family, just like Shaw tried to do last year and the year before, is be one family. And I think the conditioning really did help everybody because we were all in one struggle point and just be knowing and being with each other, knowing that we had each other's backs. And that's one thing that's awesome to have. That's leadership right there, my friend. That is leadership. All right. when I see you wearing the Canfield baseball uh, cutoff hoodie. I, I love it. Tell me about the pride that you take every time that you you put the Canfield jersey on, every time that you put the, the tools of ignorance on from the standpoint of being the catcher for the Canfield Cardinals or the pitcher for the Canfield Cardinals. How much pride goes in it for you? It's a lot. It's definitely like playing at home is one of the best feelings. Having the Cardinals and Canfield across your chest, it's just a feeling that can't get beat. Being in a city with great people, great coaches, and a great school district – one of the top in Ohio, I feel like it's just one of the best feelings knowing you have that across your chest and you're there to play for other people and to show everybody what you can do and how much work you've put in that we've all done. And knowing that they're there to support you is, is awesome. Now I know that you play for the name on the front of the uniform, you play for Canfield, but I know the name on the back of the uniform is pretty special to you as well. Uh, Talk to me about your family and how much they mean to you. Oh, my family means everything. My mom and dad have helped me since I was two years old, putting a glove on. Everything that they've done for me, I don't think I can ever repay them for it. And that's one thing I want to do for them is when I get older, just have them both retire and pay off everything I can, no matter what I do when I grow up. My brother is another another person that means a lot to me, even though him and I both fight a lot, a lot every day. But We both love each other and we help each other as much as possible. Him being a baseball player too. I try to help him on some little things that I see that I've done and I've fixed with my swings and uh, plate appearances and everything. And I just try to help him through it too. Not getting too harsh on him because I know he's still young and just helping him get to the high school level next year. I can't wait to play with him on the big, on the big field. So when you, you think about, the moment, right. That, that everybody wants it, whether it's, you know, getting the, the call that, Hey, we want you to play for us at the next level, or, Hey, we would love for you to play big league ball, right. Or you, we want to draft you to our team. That's the, that's the dream, right. At this level. Um, what drives you? What is it your family? Is it the, all the work that you've put in? Is it a combination of a lot of things? What drives you? What's your why to why you're doing this and why you put yourself through this? every single day uh, behind the dish. I just love it. Uh, Having the dream ever since I was just a little kid playing on little league fields, I just fell in love with it ever since I stepped on the field and nothing's really changed since my parents pushed me as much as they can. And my dad being my coach at a really young age, me and him have gotten really close over these years to just see how much he's, helped me through everything and having the drive even though like when I don't want to be there that day or just a practice or maybe an extra conditioning on a Saturday when we don't have games he's always like hey just go enjoy have fun and don't get hurt (laughs) most important part don't get hurt don't hurt my baby boy um all right so last question for you uh uh, you know typically we we talked about your family role models things of that nature but i want to know from your standpoint because you're without a doubt in the heart of the recruitment process being contacted as a junior stuff like that if somebody wants michael patelis on their roster at the next level what are you going to be able to tell them with certainty with confidence that they're going to get. I will be the hardest worker in any room you put me in. I'm in the facility every single day, no matter what day it is, how I'm feeling in the weight room. I put the work in there too. And they're just going to get a dog who loves to work and loves to play the game and will do the things that he can to get on the field whenever he wants to and needs to, and he'll do whatever the team needs him to do that day. You're the dog, man. You always have been. You always will be. And you always got a spot here on YSN uh, to uh, to promote 
your team and yourself and, and your family, man. We appreciate you so much. I, I am a huge fan of what you do behind the dish and what you do off the field as well. Michael Patelis, the Canfield Cardinal catcher and pitcher. Don't forget about that. You catch him at a, uh, a local ball field near you. Mikey, thank you very much, my friend. Thank you, DJ.